Well, hey everyone, how's it going? Sean here with another Genetry Solar video. And, well, if you can't tell from the video already, we're going to talk about how these two LEDs don't mean anything <laughs> when it comes to blown moss boards. Before I get into that, of course, as always, a 3-3 Genetry toll-free Monday through Friday, 9 to 4. Please keep in mind, if your inverter is under warranty, please see the original seller to get service and support for it. They will likely be able to help you either get replacement parts or service for the inverter. I cannot offer PowerJack service or warranty without their discretion. Also, GenetreeSolar.com, that's where you will find various inverters, including our brand new Genetry Solar inverter line. Check that out at GenetreeSolar.com. So, I have here an inverter. This is a 8,000 watt power jack unit, and it does, unfortunately, have the blown moss boards. This is what it looks like. Now, before I go any further... This particular inverter is obviously energized. You should never, ever, ever reach into your inverter when it's energized, either by AC or DC. For safety, always disconnect everything, power the inverter on to discharge the caps, and then you know it's safe to work on. For this example, I'm showing you because sometimes I get questions about the seller will ask the customer to look for these green LEDs. If the green LEDs are there, then it means everything is fine. Obviously, you can see here that everything is not fine, which would conclude that these green LEDs really don't mean anything, or they don't mean much. So this particular inverter it served some kind of overload of some kind that blew all the FETs out. This is most likely an overheat issue, and you can tell because when the MOSFETs usually, when they short circuit or some kind of ground issue or whatever, they will usually just pop open. And so you'll see them kind of split away from the case, they'll pop open. If they've been overheated, usually, in most cases, not all, but usually they will actually burn. So they actually have burn marks where they've caught fire. And you can see here that that fire traveled up. Fortunately, the heat sink being what it is, uh, usually puts out the, the fire pretty fast. And you can see here where the fire kind of extended out into the circuit board here. Obviously, this is what we would call a catastrophic failure. This particular unit is going to get warranty service and sent back to the customer. However, I just wanted to show you that just because you have LEDs, and usually you can look into the inverter through one of the holes over here on the side, and you can see, oh, I've got LEDs. Well, if it's dark in there, you've got LEDs then you might actually be told, well, everything is fine. That is not always the case. Really, the best bet is to shine a flashlight in here and see if there's any damage to these at all. Now, I'm actually going to show you the other side of the inverter because the other side is completely different. All right, I'm on the other side of the inverter now. I haven't done anything with this. The inverter is still charged with uh, approximately 26 volts. We have no LEDs on here. So you might immediately assume, well, these must be bad because, well, there's no LEDs. But that's not always the case. Sometimes, just because of this bridge here, the other FETs being shorted out will actually cause these to short, but they're actually not damaged. And while this isn't always the case, I can actually show you a trick to see if your FETs are damaged. Of course, if your inverter is under warranty, you never want to open this up unless instructed to do so. But you can actually see if all of the FETs are damaged, some of the FETs are damaged, you know, maybe you only need two MOS boards. This does happen quite often, and it's part of my test routine when I'm testing the FETs to see if they're good or not. And I will go ahead and show you how that's done. I have done a previous video on this subject, but I'll go ahead and show you again, because even though these lights are off, the MOSFETs may actually still be good. 
Alrighty, so I have the set of FETs that I have removed from the inverter. These are the, obviously the FETs that look undamaged. We're going to test these to see if they are bad. They might be bad, maybe they might be good. It just kind of depends, but you can test these. Get yourself a multimeter, put it in diode mode. Get your positive probe, touch it to the leftmost leg on the first MOSFET, then touch the back of the MOSFET. And look at that. These are actually bad. You can go down the line if you want to, because we're getting a near zero reading here, so these are definitely bad FETs. There's no doubt about that. And yes, they are definitely bad. So let's go ahead and discard that. But this here is a brand new set of FETs that has not been used. We can do the same exact test. And there we go. We've got two volts, almost two volts. Let's go down the line here, oops, down the line, two volts, down the line, two volts, down the line, two volts. So these FETs are obviously good, but you can do that test if you're, let's say you're repairing the inverter yourself, you're on a pinch, you don't have a lot of money, and you need to replace your FETs. It's not always the case that all of them are bad. Obviously, when they look like this, when they're all bent out of shape like that and burned up, they're bad. You want to replace them. But if they look like this, they may not be damaged at all because you really can't see any physical damage. Now, I can already tell you what caused these ones to go bad right here. This resistor blew off the board. But looking at it, unless you have a keen eye, you would not know that. So it is possible that they can look brand new like this. They could be perfectly working. And uh, in this case, the FETs that are on here are just bad. So we will go ahead and replace all those, but that is a good indicator right there. You can test this yourself. Good FETs. Test that out and figure out if you, in fact, do have bad FETs all around. That's one way to do it. All right, so I've gone ahead and replaced all the MOSFETs, and this should power on just fine. And there you have it. We can, of course, test this to make sure that it is, in fact, working by pulling the driver board. Now, I will say, keep in mind, if you do replace your MOSFETs, you will absolutely need to replace this board here. These seem to fail hand in hand. If you have any FETs that fail, this will likely be taken out, vice versa. So make sure if you are requesting parts from PowerJack that you also make sure that they include one of these driver boards. We'll go ahead and power this on without the driver board. We should get some voice errors here in a second. Output have problem. Please check. A main board. B IC board. C signal board. D overload protection board. E driver board, F A C charge board. So A through F, and it just turns out, uh, let's see, what was that E? E finally uh, lets you know about the driver board. What's funny about all of this stuff here is that those voices don't even line up to their new boards anymore because they are a single board now. They are not um, modular like the old setup. So the only thing that you can replace on them is quite literally this driver board here. We'll go ahead and plug this driver board back in and power it back on as soon as I line it up. Driver board's installed, and here we go. Working perfectly. So, hopefully that answers some questions about the green LEDs that are on here. They don't necessarily mean the, or indicate the health of the MOS boards. They could look perfectly fine have no LEDs and actually function that's another thing the LED driver uh, the resistor might actually be burnt out that does happen these you know can only take so many volts so that is a possibility I'm not saying it's impossible but I have had brand new MOSFETs out of the box with a non-working LED and the the MOS boards work perfectly fine so don't always take this at face value make sure that you test them for yourself because even though there's no green LED or there's a green LED it doesn't necessarily indicate the health of the MOSFETs. Of course if you have any questions about this definitely let me know. 
hit me up on the website at genetrysolar.com. If you're in the market for an inverter, a power jack inverter, or a Genetry Solar inverter, check out the website. Thanks again for all of your support, as always, and take care.